All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. I have a really special fig that I want to talk to you guys about today. I know I say that a lot, uh, but this is really one of the tastier varieties I grow. It's called Paradiso from Bode. I've been really obsessed with the flavor and the texture of this fig. And this one here, I didn't even know it was on the tree. And it's probably been there for a number of days. I have not been checking this tree uh, for ripe figs. I thought the crop was over. We actually have a few more that I'm going to go down and we're going to look at there in a second. But uh, this one here has split at the eye a little bit, um, as typically that's what this variety does. But it has shriveled up pretty darn well and it's kind of like a dried fig right now. So assuming it's not fermented on the inside, we have ourselves a really, really, really special treat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> um, obviously I'm excited for this fruit. But you can tell by my maniacal laugh that this is going to, I just know this is going to be so good. That pulp looks so tasty to me. Um, all the knowledge I have about eating these figs, this is sure to be one that is insanely good. And I think, um, you know, let's examine the inside a little bit here. Take off my sunglasses. It's really good. Uh, you know, how do I know that this is going to taste good, I guess? The inside just looks like pure candy to me. I don't really know how else to describe it. It's kind of like at that state of jam, really sticky, really gooey. Uh, when they dry up and concentrate like this on the inside, you really get the, the right texture and the sugar content should be insane because we're losing, we're starting to lose the water, right? As it starts to shrivel and it starts to lose that water, it starts to slowly evaporate out of the fruit. And it's not like the sugars have been increasing all this time. I mean, they, they kind of have in a way. I mean, up to a certain point, I believe the sugars just stop increasing. And then really what's happening now at this point is that the sugar content's the same, but the water content is less. So you then you end up having just a much sweeter fruit to your, your taste buds. But in reality, it's the same amount of sugar uh, just less water. Um, I've also noticed, and I want to mention this, I'm going to go down, down here to you guys in a minute. But I've also noticed since I've been, you know, having a lot of my figs actually in the fridge and I have been, um, can you guys even see me down here? I'm not even sure, but I've had a lot of my figs actually in the fridge and while they sit in the fridge, and I pick them early, let's say. Um, I don't have to let them get to this amazing point, believe it or not. We did do a video on this. Maybe it's coming out soon if it hasn't already. But I take a lot of my figs, I put them on a plate or a tray, lay them out flat with the skin side down. I cut them in half, just like I did here. Lay them down, skin side down on a plate, put them in the fridge, um, and they will slowly start to dry in the fridge. Very, 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 very slowly. And uh, if the, you know, there's no fermentation within it, there's no spoilage that's going to occur. You have a high enough bricks within the fruits before you pick the fruit. It will just continue to dry and continue to ripen in the fridge. Uh, but here's the thing, right? Is the sugar content, and this is my, I guess my question is, is the sugar content within the fridge continuing to develop? I don't think so. I think what's really happening is that when I pick these fruits off of the tree, and let's say I even pick one a little bit earlier than I should, the sugar content is still there. The bricks is still there. It's just that the whole thing kind of hasn't developed in a sense. Kind of like the idea of when you pick a tomato off the vine, they ripen from the inside out. And as long as you get them, which I don't really necessarily believe, hundred percent, but the, but a lot of farmers and people will tell you that if you pick the tomatoes, when they just turn red, 
uh, they're just starting to get their color. As long as they ripen to a certain degree from the inside out, they will continue to ripen and actually turn into a fruit that has the same sugar content or the same amount of bricks as if you had let it ripen all this time on the vine, kind of like to this point here, when you're picking it at the absolute perfect time. To me, that seems hard to believe, right? Like, how can that really be true? Because every day these figs hang on the, on the tree and every day our fruits hang on the trees or on the vines, they get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and more nutritious and they just have more and more complexity to them. It just seems odd to me that uh, that would be the case. But I think there is some truth in it. I think there is some truth in that in the figs at the very minimum in that even if I were to pick these a little bit early, put them in the fridge, get them dehydrated to some extent, um, and after like a week or two, they're gonna be very, very good. So I don't know, there's something to say about that. Maybe, um, you know, I don't have to really be waiting so long for these fruits to ripen anymore. Maybe I can get away with picking some of them early, like a lot of people do. And then just in some way, either, you know, put them in the dehydrator for a little bit or put them in the fridge for a little bit and have myself a really tasty snack. Now this, I, I don't think you can beat this. So I guess what I'm saying is that that's another option of putting them in the fridge, putting them in the dehydrator, but, but you ain't never going to beat this. I'm telling you, you're not going to beat this. Um, so I guess that does answer my question. You know, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we still want to be ripening them on our trees as long as possible. And when we do that, we're just going to have this amazing experience. So let me, uh, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. I'm going to cut off a little bit on the bottom here because I don't like the look of that. I'm sure it's probably good to eat, but why do it? This is so thick, like, and that's the beauty of this variety. Even before it, it dries like this, it's just a very thick pulp variety. Up there with the Col de Doms, uh, up there with De La Roca, you know, uh, up there with Juale Noir, up there with uh, Verdolino. There's a number of varieties I talk a lot about. Even Gris de St. Jean has a lot of that. Pastelier can have that. I got a long list of those figs for anybody interested down in my spreadsheet of the in the description, you'll see a long list of those in the spreadsheet. Um, those are really my favorite tasting figs because they have this super thick jam. And even when I move it around and really manipulate it with my hands, it just stays together so well. It's really not falling apart. That jam has sort of solidified it to some extent. And it's really quite amazing. I'm going to come back up. I'll make sure you guys even have been seeing me this whole time before I bite into this because I'm make sure I get this on camera. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen me. All right. So let's do this now. Let me, um, let me back you guys up. There's all the uh, in-ground trees over here on the south side, right next to the garden that got hit by the frost. Just going to back you guys up a little bit. All right, let's try this amazing fruit. Holy crap. So it's already just one of the most amazing figs I grow, but the problem is getting it perfect consistently, this variety. So that's what we talk a lot about in the video that we did this year on this variety. And I said, it's just the best, it is one of the best tasting fruits I grow. The problem is you're only gonna get about 5% of the crop that's any good. <laughs> Man, wow. It's just amazing to me that nature can create something like this. You know, this is cake on a tree. The skin is very chewy. Uh, it's so sweet. It's got nice berry flavor super complex you just my mind is just blown 
every time I eat something like this, you know? Some of you guys in California are so lucky to enjoy this. Probably enjoy this a lot. Way more than I get to enjoy it. Maybe you guys are at this point are numb to it. This is just like an average everyday fig that you guys get to enjoy. I cannot wait to have a low tunnel, excuse me, a high tunnel greenhouse over top of my figs to get the, this quality pretty much every time. You don't gotta live in California to do this. If you're outside of California, you need a little bit of luck like I have gotten with the weather here. The fruit flies have disappeared because it's been so cold. Um, I've just gotten extremely lucky. Now, I do have a couple more fruits down here. I want to just see if the other fruits on this tree are just as good. Um, well, maybe not just as good, but are also good because uh, we do have two of them up here. One of which is just not ready, I think. But this other one, it might be worth picking to see what the deal is. And again, you know, here it is. And again, it has a split, a split at the eye. So it's just, it just stinks that some varieties do this. I mean, even this looks good. Nothing like the first one though, but even that looks really special. I think I need to turn up the brightness a little bit on this video. Look at that. Could be my sunglasses making uh, me think the video is not that bright. Looking at the screen, it looks pretty dark. But this looks really good too. Let's... It's just not as good. Anywhere near as good, you know? The longer they hang on the tree, the better off they're gonna be. But, I picked this a little early. Again, put this in the fridge, put this in the dehydrator, the lowest setting possible. You want this, if you're gonna dehydrate this, you want it around like 90 to 110 degrees. Anything more and it does it a little too quick and it ruins, you kind of lose something there. If you do it in the fridge, right, it's not warm at all. It happens very, very slowly over time and you just get the most amazing fruits that way. Uh, check out the other video that we did on that, discussing that whole thing, um, if you guys are interested. I thank you for watching. Um, I envy you guys in California but again, here in Pennsylvania and other parts of the country, this can be possible too, like I said. We'll see you guys for the next one. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Take care, everybody.